Hello, it's Yonge Defender here on this lovely hot and sweaty day. I shouldn't moan really because I've been moaning about it's being cold for the past six months. Anyway, power steering pump failed on this. Now I've got the old power steering pump and I'll run over how it works and what the replaceable parts are on it um, for if you need to repair one. I was going to repair mine, but through completely my own fault, I managed to crush the outer casing of it in the vice when I was trying to undo it. So that was my bad. I had to buy a new one. Let's get in the box, have a look, and fit it on the car. Now there are a huge variation of pumps that you can get, so best option is to take your pump off and if you need to replace the whole thing, take it down to your supplier and have a look. I got mine from Keith Gott down in Odium. Um, they're really nice down there and they've normally always got everything in stock. Um, and great thing about them is they're really knowledgeable. You can take your parts there, they'll tell you exactly what you need uh, and give you advice along the way. Um, give you best options as well. So really good. Highly recommend going to Keith Got. So in the box you will get a pump. Or just one pump thing. Um, <clears throat> now on your pump you will have to keep from your old one, you'll have a mounting plate that bolts on around here and you'll have your pulleys that bolt on the front here as well. So make sure you keep them off your old pump. And then you'll have an inlet and an outlet pipe on the pump itself so you've got your high pressure out here and your low pressure in on the pump so i'll take it down to inch bay we'll get it on the car okay so on your off your old pump you're gonna need your mounting plate and to get this on you put the big half on there on that side first and slide use those notches slide it over the top once you've got your mounting plate on, your pump needs to sit in the car with, well, on my one, it's 200 TDI. So if you've got the same pump as me, that sticks down, and that sticks out to the left hand side or the passenger side of the car. And then your mounting holes all line up like so. And this side here is the side that mounts into the framework of the engine. Then get your bolts, which should be 8mm, and screw your plate onto the pump. So once you've got your mounting plate on, put the pulley on the top in that shaft and there's three bolts which go in the front of your pulley. To get it all off, unfortunately I couldn't video it because you know, at the time I was uh, planning on repairing it. To get it off you might need a bearing puller to put centre pin on here, the outside on, pull it off that shaft. But mine came off quite easily. Now I have decided this is the most difficult thing to film. So your power steering pump goes low down here. If I can get a good angle on this. Which I can't. So there's three holes where the power steering pump mounts, which is this one here, this one here, and that one down there. Then your alternator sits up here in this area. That there is your low pressure inlet. And that one down there, that block was your high pressure uh, out from your pump. So this will just go jubilee clipped straight onto that pipe on the bottom of the pump. And then the inlet with the, the outlet, sorry, where the big nut is in your pump is one where that one goes onto. Okay, now the sun's gone in, and we can see a bit better. So, as you can see, I put the pulley on, um, and here's my top tip. Make sure you put it the, one way, the right way around before
before you tighten it up. I just got it all into position, lined it up and thought, no, something looks wrong on this. Didn't realise I'd made that tragic mistake of putting the pellet on upside down. I'm sure there's going to be lots of people who say, that'd be obvious to not make that mistake. But when you're doing it and the sun's out and it's roasting, and you're being nervous on camera, it's easy to make that kind of mistake. But rather than cover it up and edit it out, I thought I'd keep it. I'll also keep me dropping the bolts another lot, just for fun. Okay, so line up the pulley onto your pump and bolt it on. Right, now for the fiddly bit, and the fiddly bit is getting it past all your pipe work down in position. So I won't film that because it involves a lot of words that shouldn't really be in videos. Tricky trying to line it up to get it through, you know. <laughs> there is a way. It does fit. There we go. Right. So whilst it's off the car. It's a lot easier to put that low pressure input, the one that hasn't got the big nut, on the bottom of the pump now. Don't need to tighten up the jubilee clip. I'll just get it in position. When it's on, you can tighten the jubilee clip up nice and easily then. The one with the big nut is nice and accessible, so that's easy to do from whatever position. That's one in, two to go. So we've got the pump. Oh. Got a pump in position now. So you can see that the high pressure outlet there, that's nice and accessible. But the low pressure input is right underneath the pump. So that's why you get the get that pipe on before you put it in position. bolts 10 mils just get them in position and nip them up but don't do them too tight because you're gonna have to once you've got the belts on you're gonna have to adjust it all anyway just gonna nip it up bolts in position now so i can tighten up all the hoses onto it and sort them out first Okay, so once you've got your pump back on and your pipes all connected, this is a terrible view. Um, you're going to start putting the belts on. So remember to put the alternate on the belt on first in the correct position. So my one goes at the back and then my passenger and pump belt comes in this one here. Um, so you've got the crank down there, which drives both the water pump and the power steering pump. And the power steering pump in turn turns the alternator, which is up here. I haven't got it in yet. So I'm going to tighten up this tighten up the passenger and pump belt first and then move on to the alternator so 
you see these slots down here, there's two of them, one here and one a bit further down. Let me get the camera up. That one down at the bottom there. So I'm here and move that bit out of the way. They're the two adjusters to adjust the tightness on your power steering pump belt. Okay, so I've got my belt wrapped around all three pulleys now. So it's using a crowbar, which I've put in between the first on the, uh, sorry, that I've put in between the mounting plate of the power steering pump and this bracket here. That is wire aluminium, I believe. So be careful when you don't put any too much weight on it when you do it. So you can twist it down and tighten up your power steering pump belt. Okay, so got all the belts tight now. Um, see so what about a thumb step on each of them when you push in. Let me see on that one. Um, there probably is some technical data that you can follow to put on that, but I was always brought up by if you can push your thumb into it and it doesn't go more than your the thickness of your thumb down, it's probably okay. Which, to be honest, is probably the the start of disasters. So maybe follow the technical data, but I don't have that to hand right now. So, next job, because we changed the power steering pump and we've probably lost a bit of fluid, but well, we have lost a bit of fluid, and um, we're gonna need to top up the reservoir in here and also we have to bleed it. So I've taken the cap off the pump, which is a little rubber cap that goes in the bleed valve, and that's an 11 mil. So I just wanna nip it loose and start the engine up and turn the wheels lock to lock. And as you do that, it should run fluid through it, pump fluid through, and then this here should bubble up, allow the air to come out. And you wanna keep on doing that, turning it lock to lock until the fluid pours out. What you wanna be careful with is if you go full lock on, it will fire out like a little fountain and cover absolutely everything in power steering fluid. So make sure you've got a tray underneath to catch the excess fluid as well. Because of the type of thought I had, um, and that was my Woodruff key inside the power steering pump, which I'll talk about in a minute when I show you the strip down old one and show you how it works. Um, all my power steering fluid looked like glitter. It just turned to, it smashed up that Woodruff key up so much, it just turned to uh, dust basically. And the whole thing was, had loads of tiny little bits of metal in it. So I've just taken all the pipe work off and flushed it out with some clean ATF fluid. Um, and I've replaced the reservoir as well because there's a filter in the reservoir. So now I'll top that up and we'll get onto the bleeding finally. Okay, it's going to take about a litre to fill up if all your pipes are empty and you've got your new pump on and new reservoir. So I'm just going to fill it up a little bit here. You can see all the air running out of it as it runs down the pipework. Give it a minute to settle and fill it back up again. Then we'll get the engine started and we'll start bleeding it through the bleed nipple. Okay, so let's talk about a little talk about the power steering pump, some of the issues you can have with it and how it actually works. Because if you understand how it works, then you'll understand what issues you can have with it, what you can do to help prevent those issues, and generally what is actually going wrong with it if it is going wrong. So when it comes off the car, it will look like this, not as damaged as this one. There'll be another bearing in here, in the centre here and a plate on the front, which is a mounting plate, and the pulley, which mounts on here as well. This here is your low pressure inlet that comes from your power steering pump reservoir. And this one here is your high pressure outlet. So let's separate it and have a look inside. Right, as you can see here, this is where my bearing would sit. And this is a plastic cap, which goes over, that's what's left of the plastic cap. The bearing is completely disintegrated. And this plate here is what your 
pulley fixes onto, goes onto the shaft. Removing this pulley from the shaft is quite a hard job. Um, it is on there only with pressure, and I did need a 10 ton press to remove that. Okay, I'll try and keep this as uh, best I can in the center of the camera here. So, this is your power steering pump. In here sits a bearing. Now, as you can see, mine is uh, not completely round. That's because I crushed it in the vise, which is why I had to replace it. Um, now, my failure was actually caused by my bearing here seizing up. So, if you do a lot of wading, um, there is like a plastic um, or a very thin metal cap that goes over the top to help keep the grease in. Might be worth just taking that off every now and then and checking the condition of your bearing around here and topping up the grease if needed. So that pulley on the front, you'll need a bearing pillar or similar a pulley pillar to grip around the top, pull it off. Then on the side here, your high pressure outlet, you'll need to undo that to be able to get the case off. Now you can see my case is uh, damaged all the way around here. That is, in the process of me getting off, mine was completely jammed on. But it's all loose now. So, there's a big nut here. Undo that. It will pop out a little bit. And then you have a valve which you have to take out. Then your case will slide off from the side. Say slide off. It's now stuck on. Good. There's a spring in there as well. Okay, got need some tools for that. I'm going to present to you one already damaged chisel. Doesn't really matter on mine because it's already dead. However, don't do that with yours. So that will just slide off there. That's your high pressure outlet there. And then your inlet comes around here. On the side here, there is a magnet. And you can see mine is completely covered in this very fine metal fibre dust. And that's what I was talking about earlier in the video with my fluid looking like glitter. I had all of this in there. So you've got to make sure that whatever you did to your power steering pump, if you've had a failure, check that because that'll be running around everything and wearing everything down and scratching it and destroying it for you. So there's a couple of pressure release bearings around the place. There's one there and one there. So if the pressure gets too high, it will come out of there. So to get it apart, it splits around the edge here and there's four bolts. There's a fourth one in there. I left that one out for the purpose of this video so you can get stuck to that magnet as it comes out. Which you have to release. They're all 8 mil. And there is a certain position that it sits in when it comes off. And as you lift it off, you'll see you've got this back plate here. And then what looks like a pineapple ring inside. And that's the part that spins around. My one, as well as the bearing going on the other side, my wood rough pre in here have actually failed. Um, so there's supposed to be a wood rough key in there. That had failed and that's what's disintegrated and left all this mess on that magnet there. So as it spins around, you can see all these little pins or roller bearings they were all able to move around this pineapple shaped ring here and they move out here which allows fluid to come inside then as it gets up to the top around here you see in this misshapen hole it squeezes these pins in which then forces the fluid back and up through this plate and out your high pressure outlet so one of the big things to check on your power steering pump is that bearing on the front. I'm almost certain that if that wouldn't have failed on mine, 
which is just due to lack of maintenance and constantly wading and going through water, that wouldn't have happened. So that Woodruff key in there sits in that slot, which comes out the Charmaine shaft. Then you have all these little roller pins that sits around that. I'm not sure on the name of this, but I'll call it a pineapple gear. Um, maybe someone in the comments could let me know exactly what it's called if they know. That's around You can see mine's got a lot of scoring, which is probably from all that metal flying around the place. And on the back of this plate here, you can see there's a lot of scoring going on where it's been sitting misaligned and all that metal fibres from that woodruff tree breaking. There is a couple of lugs or dowels there, which only allow you to fix it back in a certain way on there. So you, can, you can't get it the wrong way around when you put it back together. So you can get service kits for these. You can replace all the seals inside and the bearings around here and the woodruff key and you can get this pineapple gear and all these little roller bearings separately. Um, that's it for the power steering pump. Um, ghosted bit back together as you disassembled it. There's not a lot to it. It's not overly complicated at all. It's quite a simple pump, um, but it is quite delicate and fragile. So if you do have a failure, it's likely to destroy it. The big thing is, don't damage that case when you take it off, like I did. Okay, so that's how a power steering pump works. That's what the internals of it are, and uh, that's how you fit it to your vehicle. I will, um, I'll put a link to Keith Gott's website, which is where I bought my pump, my pump from. Um, I get most of my parts from there, or pretty much all of them really, and they are really good uh, suppliers uh, they're really friendly and they're quite chatty and they will give you all the advice that you need and um, so you can literally go in there and say i need this show them a picture and they'll tell you exactly what it is that you require so if you like that video please like and subscribe and i will see you next time